Hello everybody, welcome. This is Taro from Taro03.com and today is Tuesday, December 12th, 2023 and it is 1.55 p.m. Central Time here in the Ozarks and this is Mystery Report number four for 2023 and this looks like it's going to be my final report for 2023 Maybe it's possible to get one more in. This is part two from last report written to Gary on Zechariah 12, 10, and Isaiah 53. Epiphanies regarding the first and last Adam. Now this is going to be the, the, the deep side of the pool. So Gary is the most advanced person that I'm aware of that says that sees the three witnesses the mystery sets in scripture God's wisdom it's hidden right in plain sight right in front of everybody it's right in front of our noses and once you see the pattern it's pretty easy to see it and some people even after they watch this video and they go through all the newsletters they think I'm out of my mind that's the way it works I'm not kidding you. Once you see it, it changes everything. So, um, Gary, some of this you'll see that I added diagrams. This is the JPEG, by the way. And so it's not quite as clear as the, these others are the book version that was, that were cleaned up and they were saved in a different format, a TIFF format. But, if you're picking up right after newsletter number three, then you can refer back to now this is gonna make this is gonna make more sense. So I'm going to um give a little as I'm going through this article, give a little more color commentary to help more of you see connect the dots. Also, Gary informed me, so I was over at his house on Thanksgiving. Inform me that he has his headset and he's got his pal talk um, software and he's ready to go on the tutor program. So I've been having difficulty getting out Mr. Reports this year and prepping and gardening and busy from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed at night, working myself to exhaustion. And um, it's getting ready to, we haven't had as much snow this year, but it's getting ready to, we're, we're not going to be able to do the prepping. And we're going to be indoors more going through the winter months. And I hope to have time to get that program going as soon as possible. Then we're going to have a chat room set up, maybe even Terrell's research group, where we started again. And... Peter and others, this John, others of you are wanting to come together and what I'm looking for ultimately is to have like Peter in Europe and Gary here in the United States and then members from Australia and New Zealand. That's the way we did Terrell's research group. We had over 300 members to uh, keep the room open over at Pal Talk 24 hours a day and Videos can be presented and I'll announce when I'm going to be there and question and answers and that's what I really, really want to do. We're running out of time. And that's one of the reasons that this report that I'm making for you right now, I did not intend to write this. It's a, it's a little bit too deep. It's on the deep side of the pool, but we're running out of time. The Black Star is almost here. And much of what I'm sharing with you guys in the mystery reports is going to make way more sense from the other side of the veil. So we're on the dark side of the veil. And most people, even members of Christ's body, have difficulty seeing through the darkness to see what I'm trying to show, what I'm trying to show you here. But I'm going to connect a lot of the dots in a lot of the, the information that's been shared in all the newsletters in this it's like a summing up of everything. It even goes further than what's in the Mystery Explained. 
to help you see the biggest mystery in the Bible. The biggest mystery in the Bible, many would think, would be God's mystery. But Paul writes about that. And the mystery of Christ, Paul writes about that. What he doesn't write about is what we have to learn through the types. So I kind of create a um, pattern in my commentary here to help you to connect the three witness mystery sets and see the two witnesses and then the three witnesses. In scripture you see time and time again by two or three witnesses this or this is going to be done. So let me just start at the top here. So editing my original email with Gary which was for newsletter number three um, for sharing this information in the 2023 newsletter number three had led me to the threshold of an epiphany moment highlighting the opportunity to provide clarifying statements on one of God's deepest mysteries and this is I mean we can debate this for the ages to come but I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the deepest mystery I'm talking about right here which uh, the mystery of Christ and God's mystery they're infinite the mystery is an infinite topic it's, it's we're going to carry it back with us to the infinite realm where we're gods where we all know each other Take a look around. Doesn't matter if you're in the Rose Bowl. Doesn't matter how many people you see. We know. We all know each other intimately, as gods. We all incarnate inside of one another. So we become members of each other's body, and then each member, each god, places his brethren around a great table, in just the way that we desire. Our best friends are on our right. Those that we need to keep close that aren't really our friends are on the left. And then our outward appearance, the way that we see each other as gods in God's infinite realm, is determined by the way we place each other. So we're all identical whenever we're made. Perfect, mature, complete, done. It's what we do after that that gives us our own personality as members of each other in God's infinite realm in the mountain of God and as members of Christ's body and mem individually members of one another in a pyramid that is typical of the mountain of God it's a pyramid that's in New Jerusalem Christ is at the top bright shining white brighter than the Sun and Paul Barnabas Titus and others are up there near and our objective even though most don't realize it is to be as high up in that pyramid as possible by the time we get to the ages of the ages. And that's going to translate into our position, our heavenly position in God's infinite realm. That's what all this is about. So we are here for the purpose of judgment. Hebrews 9.27 And judgment over our active participation in the satanic rebellion that took place in God's infinite realm. That's what it's all about. That's what we're here for. We're here as victims or perpetrators, sons of light or sons of darkness. This is how I, this is some of the most important truths come out of Genesis 1 1. A standalone verse of the Bible that is the key to unlocking everything else. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? But it's a code. Spirit, blood, water, just like you see right here. The heaven and the earth. And whenever you go to John 1, 1 through 3, you have the first three verses in tabernacle form. That is the laying out of this single verse. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without all things are made by him. And so, that's the thing to realize, and I write in my commentary here, that the most, one of the most important truths for all the ages is that there are only three that testify. Those three are God, God's Word, and Adam. That's all there is. Everybody else is a member of their body. This is God. This is the Son of God with a big S. There's only one of them. 
God's Word. And then there's the Word of the Word. The Earth. There's only one of them. And his name is Adam. And everybody else is a member of his body. Everybody in this universe is a member of Adam's body. Everybody in heaven is a member of Christ's body. Everybody in the infinite realm is a member of God's body. And that's it. In the beginning was the heaven and the earth. And that's all there is. Try to add to that or take away from that. And then you get away from that simple truth. Then there are only three that testify. That's what I'm saying right here. All things of John 1, 1 through 3, all things is the earth of Genesis 1, 1. With its powers, principalities, the heavens above, the earth below, the heaven, the firmament, the expanse in between. And the three are into the one. So eventually at the end, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 15 uh, 28, God is all in all. Everything that came out of God is going to go back into God. And it's going to be only God. That's it. God's going to be all in all, just like Scripture says. And the subjection process, just before that, in verse 27, 1 Corinthians 15, 27, is everything is subjected to the Son. That's the Word. That's Christ. That's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Heavenly Man, Christ Jesus, right here. Everything that's in here came out of here. Everything that's here came out of here. Everything is going to go back into this infinite realm. That's where we came from. That's where we're going to return to. But the three witnesses, God, heaven, and earth, are broken down into their three witnesses. So many of you believe that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that's what you've been taught in error. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the three witnesses testifying for the Word. Those that are worshiping my Father who art in heaven have created an idol out of something that's in heaven. That's what the commandment says. That you cannot worship what's in heaven. And then people turn around and worship my Father who art in heaven. Anyway, the three witnesses of the Almighty are God to come, God who, who is, and God who was. Revelation 1.8 God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. The Almighty, that's who it is. This is God who is, who is speaking in Genesis 1, 26, when he says, let us make man like us. Spirit, blood, water. Man, woman, seed. Three witnesses, they're testifying throughout. In the heavens, heaven, and earth, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in God. So everything I'm sharing with you here is in this diagram. So the reason that it's presented here like this is so you can see that there's God's mystery that concerns all the members of God's body. That includes all of us. And then there's the mystery of Christ. Members of Christ's body. And then there's members of Adam's body. That's the one that's most difficult to see. It's everything in this universe. Every man in this universe, all the living, are members of Eve's body, mother of all the living, Genesis 3.20. But they have a heavenly counterpart, a heaven's counterpart, that's the members of Adam's body. All the members of Adam's body are in the heavens, all the members of Eve's body is in the earth. They're rejoined together again. That's why we judge the world and the angels, because they're two halves of the same whole. So the angels, for men to go... You've heard how many times flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The angels cannot inherit the kingdom of God either. They need the other half. As an angel and a man are two halves of the same whole, the same immortal soul. Angels are not immortal souls. They're spirit witnesses. Immortal souls are singularities. In the beginning, Adam was a living soul, Genesis 2, 7. He had to be broken, just like God's Word had to be broken, into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Adam had to be broken, too, into Adam, Eve, and Seed. It's the same three witness pattern that you're seeing right here. So what this boils down to, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, the Son's a singularity testifying for the original Word. Eventually, everything in the Father and the Holy Spirit is going to be rejoined together. And the Son's going to become the Word again. 
Same thing with the heaven. The heaven is going to engulf the heavens and the earth. There's going to be no more angels. There's going to be no more men. All are going to be immortal souls. The thing to realize for this lesson right here is this is the members of Adam's body. These are the members of Christ's body. These are the members of God's body. And we have membership in each. Because you and me walking around this earth, we are mere incarnations. Yeah, we're gods. Psalms 82, 6. And John what, 10, 34 through 36. But we are incarnations of gods. Because, yeah, you're a god in God's infinite realm. And you're still there. You're there right now. You incarnated into heaven to fight with Michael the Archangel against the dragon. And you incarnated into the earth, into this life that you are right now. So this world is like a matrix. Inside of a matrix. And the only realm that's real is in God's infinite realm. So while God's mystery is Christ, and Paul writes about God's mystery being Christ, and he writes about the mystery of Christ. Then the mystery of Adam is only taught in the types. You haven't heard of that before, likely. The mystery of Adam. So God is the Almighty. The heaven word is Christ, the Son of God. And the earth is Adam, the Son of God. There's only one Son of God. Everybody else is adopted as sons in this universe. Keep in mind always for the eight to the ages of the ages that there is only three that testify. That's what I shared with you earlier. So God uses this two or three witnesses rule. There are many verses throughout God's word to reveal his wisdom to his sons while hiding these things from the sons of darkness of disobedience. For example, the mystery of church today is the body of Christ. We see the teachings on the body of Moses. They're baptized into Moses and into the sea. There are water witness types all over there. They drink the spiritual drink and the rock that followed them. And the rock was Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, start at 1, down to 5. So, and they're baptized into Moses. See, we're baptized into Christ. So there's something missing. Can you see it on the Mount of Transfiguration? Some are baptized into Christ. Some are baptized into Moses. These are water witnesses. These are blood witnesses. These are, come on, you can see it. This is spirit witnesses. But there's no mention of the mystery or the, um, the body of Elijah anywhere. But it's there if you understand that the Bible is written four-dimensionally. And is the types that help us to see what God is saying through his word. So the, the body of Elijah is comprised of the angels, they're right over here. And women wear their head covered when they pray, members of Christ's body do. If you're following the instructions from the steward of the dispensation of God's grace, you're praying with your head covered because of the angels. And that represents these veils as symbols of authority. The symbols of authority over the earth. So, and women may feel like, you know, that's, you're getting the short end of the stick, but you're in the same position as the Holy Spirit. The woman is called the helper. Is that Genesis 2.20? Well, the Holy Spirit's called the helper too. Same thing, same word. The Holy Spirit is the helper of the Father and the Son. And you can see the Holy Spirit has great power. Like the woman has great power. It's just we all have our roles. And we're all parts of one another. It's important. So you look carefully at the Mount of Transfiguration diagram. We see Peter, John, and James looking intently at Moses, Christ, and Elijah. Three witnesses of water and blood and spirit. Spirit. Elijah is the spirit witness. It sounds like it puts him over Christ, but it doesn't. The blood witness testifies for the original singularity. The blood witness is the most important witness. Prophet priest, king. Who's the most important? The king. That's right. Elijah's like the prophet, which he is the prophet of Scripture. And the priest of Scripture is Moses. 
So here's a here's something really cool. If you can see it, kind of like what Christ says, if you can bear it. This is the last, the Mount of Transfiguration. Christ promised in the previous chapter that some of that were standing with him were going to see him in his glory. And they did, because they saw him on the Mount of Transfiguration with Elijah and Moses. This is the last. The first, Christ keeps saying the first is last and the last is first. People don't know what it means. Because these three witnesses right here are the three witnesses of the garden, the first. This is Adam, this is Eve, Moses is Eve. I know, it's hard to wrap your head around. And the Lord God, Christ, standing between them, he's the Lord God that made them. So Jesus Christ is testifying, he's heaven. He is literally heaven. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a realm, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the word incarnate on the earth, conceived of the Holy Spirit. And he's testifying continuously in everything he says about the earth. John the Baptist is testifying about heaven. They're testifying about each other. Because the Lord God is testifying about the man that he made in the garden. Adam in Genesis 2.7. Oh. Difficult to believe. But it's true. And when you go through the New Testament, particularly the kingdom epistles, then you're going to see the testimony going back and forth about heaven and earth, heaven and earth, heaven and earth. That's all going to make sense. And when you get to the end of that and you tie all the knots, then you're going to see it in the way that it's being presented right here. So the truth should become evident that the body of Elijah is composed of the angels who do not see death, as Elijah was taken in a chariot of fire to heaven. The truths related to the three witness teachings right here are the reason that Paul instructs women to pray with their heads covered. I shared that with you already. Women are water witnesses, water witness helpers. It's John 16, 7, by the way, the helper. And Genesis 2, 20, the helper. So God gives us these clues, even through the translators, of the correlations between the spirit witnesses, the blood witnesses, and the water witnesses. The veil covering the woman's head. And the reason that Jews all wear a covering, men and women, is for a reason. It's a real important reason. They are God's chosen race, but chosen for what? Not because they're superior. Because they're water witnesses, they're priests, they're a kingdom of priests. Prophets, priests, and kings. Which would you rather be? Think it through clearly. Which would you rather be, a prophet, a priest, or a king? I think I'd rather be the king in the kingdom. Well, that's what we are as members of Christ's body. The priests are water witnesses. They wear the head covering just like the woman does. And they're going to wear that head covering to the ages of the ages until they join us in Christ Jesus and in the Lamb, through the marriage supper of the Lamb, by works. Israel's coming to be in Christ Jesus in the heaven realm, in that pyramid I was telling you about, by works. That's important to understand the difference. Because those of us who have obeyed the gospel, we receive all the things that they're going to receive as a free gift. And that is going to make Israel jealous to the end of time. And they don't even know it yet. And Paul writes about it over and over and over again. But that's what even the Old Testament says. God's going to make Israel jealous through that which is not even a nation. And it's going to continue for the ages to come. Because they're going to stand on that sea of glass. There's a picture here. See the sea of glass, the body of Moses? This is the reconstructed Jacob's ladder from the Mount of Olives on this earth. There's going to be a time when there's no more death. Well, if there's no more death, how are people going to go to heaven? Think about it. Because they're going to serve David as a prophet or a priest. And when they graduate, they're going to go, they're going to be all done, finished by works. And then they're going to ascend up this Jacob's ladder. And as they're ascending up Jacob's ladder, they're going to, there's going to be descending angel descending down. There's, Whenever they're standing on that sea of glass, which scripture says is before the throne, uh, there's a corresponding throne 
on the other side where the angels are doing their thing. Peter, John, and James and the kingdom bride cannot see them. We're members of the Lamb's body. We judge the world and the angels. We can see both. And we're going to judge both. Because we're going to know, which I know right now, that they are two halves of the same whole. It's like a husband and a wife making up one person. There's a body of Moses and there's a body of Elijah. The same exact way. And in this diagram you can see God. And it's a mystery how he is in heaven. Because remember, heaven and the highest heaven can't contain God. But it's explained in my book, The Mystery Explained. Because there's a, it's like a typewriter ribbon. Some of you don't even know what the typewriter is. It has a, a ribbon that goes around. And the newer versions have a typewriter ball. Well, that ribbon is a veil, the second veil. And it's wrapped right around God's throne, stretched just as tight as you can imagine. It allows him to sit in the infinite realm and in Christ Jesus. It's a real busy place right there, by the way. So as God is doing things here, the Lamb is doing things here in the center of the throne. And as God's doing things here and the Lamb's doing things here, see this is God, infinite realm, heaven. David is doing things on the earth, on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. So the, the saying that you hear from Christ, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, is going to be extended on earth as it is in heaven as it is in God's infinite realm at some point the immature are given two witnesses the mature can see the three witnesses even without being shown so I'm trying to help you to see the patterns here so that you can do that for yourself as you become a mature member of Christ's body you're going to realize and see things four dimensionally through the veil of time and space. Truly, truly, really, really great stuff. So this is what I just explained to you. God seated and didn't quite cover everything up here, but subscribe to the mystery report and you'll get your hands on this and you're going to get your hands on all the mystery reports going back 2019 that are in the Dropbox folder. See, on the Black Star Report, you get all the 2023 newsletters, but you get one a week. The Mystery Report's not like that. The Mystery Report, there's only four Mystery Reports for this year so far. Maybe I can get another one in. But you get all the newsletters going back to the beginning, that newsletter number one in 2019. And the first lesson leads to the second lesson leads to a paper trail, it's a breadcrumb trail. Until you get to this lesson right here, that's kind of culminating everything together. Big dog. My apologies. The big dog was doing his big dog thing for, there for a minute. So my apologies. I was away for momentarily there. So this is a pretty critical point of my presentation. And I'm helping you to see who John the Baptist really is. Because he is God's mystery. The mystery of Adam. This guy right here. He's been here before. He's coming again. And um, it's true that there's for a man to live, to die once and then the judgment. That's true for every seventh day person. Like you and me. There are only two exceptions. And that's Adam and Eve. But you see, they are begotten. Adam was created, but in the dust of the ground, he was begotten. Eve, she wasn't born of woman. She was taken out of his side. Those are the two um, exceptions to the rule. Everybody else. They, they are the two olive trees from Zechariah chapter 4, start at verse 11. That verse is right here. See the olive tree? They come, they've been coming again and again and again. Sometimes they come together. Like Moses and Joshua. Adam and Eve. Abraham and Sarah. David and Bathsheba. Sometimes Adam and Eve come together and they testify to their children. As father 
as prophet, as priest, as king. As David, whenever David comes back, because he's going to. It's prophesied all over the Old Testament. David is going to feed him, feed Israel himself. That's Ezekiel 34, start at 22. And by the time you get to Ezekiel 37, 24 through 28, you'll see he does that forever. And you'll realize the first is last. Because Adam was created to be in the garden forever. He was supposed to die there. But everything's happening for a reason. And we're doing things that have already been done. Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9. What's happened in the infinite realm is happening in heaven. It's happening here. On earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite room. There's a reason for all this. So this is some of the most important words. John 3.31. It's one of the most important verses of the Bible. So he, Jesus Christ, who is from above, he who is from above, who is from heaven, is above all. The one who is from the earth, which is Adam, is of the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. Oh, John the Baptist is testifying about the Lord God who made him. He's talking about heaven and earth from Genesis 1.1. -1. The teaching also states that he... He from heaven above Christ, the Word incarnate, testifies of the earth. Therefore, John the Baptist testifies as the earth about the Lord God who formed the earth, and Jesus Christ testifies as heaven about the earth and the first Adam he formed from the dust of the ground. A reading of Matthew 7 through 14, Matthew 11, 7 through 14, will show Jesus Christ testifying about John the Baptist, the earth and saying that he belongs in king's palaces. That he is more than a prophet. That he's my messenger. He's the greatest born of women. That all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And that he is Elijah who is to come. And you're going to, some of you are going to say, oh, he said was to come, not is to come, except for if you do the research, you'll find out that it's written in the Aorist tense, which is the tense of perpetuity. There is no English translation, and so the, every time the Aorist tense is used, the translators translate it in the past tense. They don't know what to do with it. He's talking about Elijah, who is to come. He's prophesied about in Acts 3, start at 19. The restoration of all things, the prophet. Moses is speaking. He's going to... Well, Peter's speaking... Citing what Moses said, the Lord God's going to send a prophet like me. For among your brethren, who does not obey that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Well, of course they are. He's getting ready. He's in the world right now. He's getting ready to begin the process of restoring all things. The day of the Lord's about to begin with the black star. That's coming. And then he says, he who has an ear, let him hear. But it's not just ears, it's ears from God. And for you guys, it's ears from God, it's eyes from God. If God appoints you to see it, you can see it. And if he's hiding it from you, you will never see it. The only individual in the kingdom greater than the prophet is the king. The prophecy kingdom is the kingdom, the coming kingdom of our father David. Jesus disqualified himself as being born of women. Because he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Nothing from Mary, nothing from Joseph. Conceived of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God made flesh. No sin. If he had a, a, a one speck of Mary or Joseph within him, then he would need a Savior just like we do. But he doesn't. He knew no sin. But he became sin on our behalf so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ. Apostle Paul. Second Corinthians was at five twenty one. When proclaiming um 
John the Baptist was the greatest born of women, and he disqualified himself as being born of women, in which he wasn't. The clue, the greatest of all men is the father of all men. All the prophets in the law prophesied until the day that prophecy began to be fulfilled. The final two verses of the Old Testament. Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. So what's being written there is Elijah is going to come, which that was John the Baptist. And he's going to restore the hearts of the fathers to children, which is innocence. The innocence of the Adam had in the garden before the fall. He's going to restore the hearts of the, the children to their fathers. In other words, immortality. So people are going to once again live to be thousands of years old. Some people that begin this age, this period, I shouldn't say an age, this kingdom period that's coming up are going to live to the end. Some of them over 3,000 years. Black star, when it comes, terraforms a planet, it's going to change everything. Like in the days of Noah. Men before Noah lived to be 120 years old. People before that, no, people before Noah lived to be thousands of years old. After Noah, 120. After Moses, 70. The change comes with the black star, and that's about to happen now. So the final two verses of the Old Testament testify of Elijah coming to restore all things, which began the moment that John the Baptist began his ministry in the wilderness. You see, the kingdom period started. It's just held in abeyance. It's at a pause. A parenthetical period that we're living in now. The body, of, uh, the body of Christ, the mystery of Christ, uh, none of this was seen by the Old Testament prophets. This mystery period that we're living through was not seen by the prophets, which means they couldn't prophesy about it. There's been no prophecy fulfilled for almost 2,000 years. Sounds like blasphemy, doesn't it? But it's the truth. We're living in a mirror period, a soul period, a blood witness period that the prophets never saw. That's why God had to raise up the Apostle Paul and give him this mystery stuff. This is all blood witness stuff. And Scripture is, God's Word is constructed exactly like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple with two veils. The veils hiding what's inside the holy place, which is the 13 Pauline epistles. So even the kingdom disciples walking around for the next 3,600 years on the earth are not going to be able to understand, comprehend the mystery. It's for blood witnesses. Specifically, it's for you, if God chooses you to see it. So Jesus Christ says that John the Baptist is Elijah who is to come. And then we come upon perhaps the most misunderstood verses of the whole Bible. From when Christ and his three witnesses were descending the Mount of Transfiguration. And his disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he answered and said to them, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. Now remember, John the Baptist was beheaded in Matthew 14. And he says that he's coming again to restore all things. Acts 3, sort of uh, 19, says the same exact thing. He's coming to restore all things. But people still don't want to believe that. They want to twist scripture instead of just reading what it says. But I say to you, Elijah already came, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands, which he did. And then the disciples understood. He spoke to them about John the Baptist. So these verses are misused by professing Bible prophecy experts to teach Elijah already came as John the Baptist, who the disciples recognized. The disciples did not understand Christ's teaching. Like professing Christians today, they don't understand what Christ was teaching either. They think they do, which creates the roadblock for them. They think they see the light and they're standing in darkness. They don't even know it. Christ had already told the disciples that John the Baptist was Elijah. That was recorded in Matthew 11. If you can bear it, he is Elijah, who is to come. Christ's testimony is heaven testifying of the earth, and the Lord God, Lamb of God, testifying of the man he formed to be prophet, priest, and king on the earth, like the Lamb of God is the king of heaven, with earth as his footstool. 
While the disciples understood that Jesus Christ had spoken to them about John the Baptist as Elijah, they failed to realize that Jesus Christ was speaking to them about their father Adam. How many of you guys made the connection? It's God's deepest mystery, if you can see it. The first Adam, the son of a priest, Zacharias, the prophet, Elijah, who is more than a prophet, David, the father of fathers, Abraham, the deliverer, Joshua, who God has been dealing with in various skins, starting in Genesis 3.21. For as long as the skin was the human skin, not an animal skin put on the human, it's the human skin put on his spirit. Everything before Genesis 21 was in heaven. For as long as kingdom of the heaven suffered violence, and violent took it by force. See, that prophecy that what Christ is talking about from the days of John the Baptist. Then the kingdom of heaven is, suffers violence and is taken by force. That's been going on since the days of Adam. That's what John the Baptist was saying. In the garden with the serpent. The Lord God, Jesus Christ, is testifying about the earth and the first Adam, who is one of the two olive trees, testifying before the Lord of the earth as we speak. He's there right now. We will be caught up to meet, huh? It's in a T here, isn't it? Meet the Lord in the air when the black star causes the destruction that comes suddenly like the birth pangs upon a woman with child. The Holy Spirit will deliver the body of Christ to the Lord like a sealed letter and then return to fall upon Elijah standing on the banks of the Jordan River to preach the gospel of the kingdom to Israel to begin the restoration of all things during the upcoming day of the Lord. So this is what scripture looks like laid out as the timeline. We're coming upon this line right here, this red period. The prophets never saw it coming. The devil and his minions never saw it coming. They didn't see us coming, the body of Christ. They were stopping the bride of Christ whenever they killed Christ. And John the Baptist, they were stopping the bride. We're not the bride of Christ. Paul never uses the word bride once in any of his letters. We're the body of Christ. This is the bride of Christ here. Elijah's going to show up and he's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Go to Matthew 24. See what it says. The end of the age. Matthew 24, 3. So tell us about your coming and the end of the age. Well, Paul, um, the, um, Christ describes what's going to happen. That they're going to kill you. And they're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the end of the world. And then the end will come. To the whole world and then the end will come. We don't even preach the gospel of the kingdom today. Elijah will. And there's going to be no more blood of the cross after that. Because there's going to be no more preacher on the earth to preach it. We're all going to be caught up in, in the, to meet the Lord in the air. So this is the period that's coming. Almost everybody's been deceived. They think that we're nearing the end of the age. We're nowhere near the end of the age. Look at all the prophecy that has to be fulfilled. Tons of it. There's no. That's not even a temple. They say, well, the temple's going to be built any time. The Antichrist is going to come. The Antichrist is not going to come for over 3,000 years. The Antichrist, spiritually, is already here. He's in the members of the sons of disobedience, sitting within them, just like Christ is sitting in me right now, looking at the screen. The mystery of iniquity was back in Paul's day. The mystery of iniquity is claiming victims right now. Most professing, most people that are running around as Christians today are professing Christians. They're not Christians at all. They think they are. They're blinded by the deluding influence. That's why there's one truth that I'm sharing with you right now. There's one truth. And there's 20,000 different denominations of professing Christians. That's why. If they could see the one truth, they would all agree. And if you want to start a big fight, get. I'm from a family of ministers, and I can tell you right now what the family reunions were like. They were like cat fights. They couldn't agree on anything. And especially with me telling them about the differences between the two gospels and the churches and all this. No, I was not. I was not their favorite, to say the least. So why most professing Christians believe that we are nearing the end of the age, we are witnesses of how the day of the Lord is about to begin. That's the truth. I hope that you can see it. So that's um, my report. 
for newsletter number four for the mystery report. Now it's going to be uploaded to the 2023 Dropbox folder to be joined with the others. And I hope that um, my apologies for not being able to do these more often. You guys are getting my best effort. And there's maybe enough content for two or three more. I know I will not be able to get them all done by the end of the year. And then we off and run again on a new. But I'm going to do my best to get you another report done before the end of the year. That I make five for 2023. So to be a Mystery Report subscribers is $25 a year. You click right, right here. $25 per year. You get a Dropbox folder link notification email. You get access to all the newsletters using Dropbox folder. You do not need a Dropbox account. Do not sign up for a Dropbox account. All you need is the link. No username, no password, nothing. Put the link right up here in this box right here. Click it and you'll be looking at all the newsletters. Then if you subscribe right now, you're going to get a 2024 mystery report Dropbox for link notification email giving you access to all of next year's. And then your once a year payment of $25 won't be due until December 12th, 2024. Black Star comes early, you get it for free. And like I say, with the Black Star report, happy to do that for you. Then if you want to tutor program, you want to join myself and Gary and, and Peter and this John and others in the chat room. It's going to be password protected. Then you can come and ask your questions and Gary will let you know. He'll probably be there a lot more than I am. But you can ask Gary questions. I'm not kidding you. He sees it as clear as anybody else that I know walking around. And so you have questions. He's in between you and me. He's a great intermediary. And then he'll tell you if he has the answer. He'll give it to you. If he doesn't, he'll say, Terrell will be here on Tuesday at 8 o'clock or something like that. That's uh, for only an extra $25 a year. And whenever you subscribe, you get a copy of my my book, The Mystery Explained, the EPUB version for your Kindle. And whenever you get your, that I can't mention here on this platform, whenever you get your, uh, for protection, then you can, you're going to get the extended PDF version of that. And my 9-11 book, too. So, um, check me out over at, whenever you click on this link right here, that Substack, there are articles there on helping people see the light on what I'm sharing with you here. Really, really good stuff. And with that, I appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here, down here in the scripture section. So here's the scripture section right here. See, it start right there. I can't tell you how many times that Gary has told me. It all goes back to the two Gospels of the New Testament. And he's trying to help other people. That's where we, he, we have to go back to the beginning and set the foundation, stones. Differences between the two Gospels, the Gospel of the Kingdom versus the Word of the Cross. Differences between the two churches, the Bride of Christ versus the Body of Christ. The differences between the four baptisms. There are three baptisms for the Gospel of the Kingdom, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's one baptism for us done by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ's body on the cross when we obey the gospel to make us active participants in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So when Christ went into the ground, we went into the ground with him. When God raised him from the dead, he raised us from the dead. That's the mystery of Christ. As we are members of Christ's body, right? On the earth, members of Adam's body in heaven as members of Christ's body, in the infinite realm as members of God's body. And there are only three that are testifying that is so important. And whenever you get that, you're going to be ahead of those even on the other side of the veil. So what I'm sharing you is going to become more and more common knowledge on the other side of the veil. Blessed are those among us that can see these things on this side in the darkness. And even more blessed are we if we're able to help others to see these things to help and to help them to help others while well, we can we're running out of time i'm not kidding you black star is almost here appreciate your support again get more information right here at terrell03.com and i'll see you on the next mystery report